everyone, I am Freedy here, and welcome to today's weapon review video and God Roll Finder for Destiny 2. Today's episode, we are going to be reviewing the new Epicurean Fusion Rifle, and also provide you the ideal role for both PvE and PvP. The Epicurean Fusion Rifle is a legendary 740 charge time fusion rifle that can only be gotten through the Menagerie game mode, with an excess blue rune and any green rune to get the weapon. A slow firing but hard hitting weapon with an impressive amount of range, the Epicurean is an ideal weapon for mapping people or enemies at ridiculous ranges, and can be used solo to stand your ground if you don't use your primary. Its impact stat along with its range can allow users with good aim to constantly one shot players from left to right or at a safe distance, and can either be on par to the Oriental, depending on its perks. Although I speak highly of this weapon, it's still not as highly recommended to use by a lot of players simply because the Oriental is just outright better. Their stats are as equally near identical to each other, but the frames from what I can tell is what makes the major difference. The Epicurean uses a precision frame, so shots are more vertical when fired, which makes it easy for landing a bolt to the head and increasing your chance to one-shot targets. However, this weapon can be inconsistent because of its incendiary at times, as landing a full body shot doesn't always register or sometimes hit. Your target at times will survive, and you will need to think fast in terms of ending them before they end you. The Oriental on the other hand is a high impact frame, which grants the user better accuracy when stationary and ADSing. For a weapon like this, it's an ideal syndrome to run with for fusions as you need to land around 4-5 bolt shots to kill targets. Being stationary is both a pro and a con for fusion rifles, as they give you a better chance to pre-charge and land your hits, especially with a high charge time but it also means that if you miss, you're screwed. And this is why people are using the Oriental more. With its high impact and bonus and accuracy, you'll always be consistent in terms of getting kills. While the Epicure Ring can still do that, but has some weird inconsistencies at times, from what I've noticed. But enough about the Oriental, let's look into the stats of the Epicure Ring. It has charge time 740, impact 80, range 63, stability 54. Handling 37, reload speed 33, aim assist 65, recoil direction 80, zoom 15, and a magazine of 5. As you can see with the stats, its handling, reload speed, and charge time is where its main weak points lie. Its reload speed is slow, but not too slow to the point of making it useless, while the handling speed is a 50 50 area, as you won't rely on it so much, but in heated situations where your primary is not usable in close range, having a quicker handling speed can go a long way. Its charge time though is an area that will vastly need to be looked at, and thoroughly improved on, simply because if you're going to use this weapon in PvP, and go against shotgun to sidearm users, you'll need to catch them out first before they land a hit on you. At 740 charge time, you'll still have a chance to take on players as you're going to be pre-charging a lot before firing, but think about this. How many times do you think you're going to be getting into a fight where after defeating one person, another person appears? The answer, a lot. And with a charge time like this, the chances of you finishing the next person is slim to none. Of course, its one shot capability and 10 plus meters of kill range is a major pro for the weapon, but sadly its charge time is something that holds this weapon's potential back. And if you're going to be using this in PvE, then this won't be much of a concern but we are focusing on PvP and PvP only. Luckily, we don't have to worry about a lot of the perks to work with, as most of the stats such as impact, range and stability are already in a good spot, so we're focusing more on making the weapon even more better killing machine than normal. So let's focus on the masterwork area, and within our case we have 4 choices, reload, handling, stability or range. The rule of thumb in terms of picking a mass work for a future rifle is to go with either more range if it lacks it, or go with more stability if it lacks it. Our range of the weapon is already in a good spot, and the stability is in a pretty healthy spot as well, but I would say go with more stability so you can control the weapon's recoil a bit more and allow your bolts to go a bit further, depending on if you have other perks that improve on the weapon's range, aka scopes, battery, or third column option. If you decide you don't want improved range or stability for some odd reason, I would then suggest you decide on whether a faster reload speed or handling is a better choice to run with. Now of course there is a fifth option, which is the charge time masterwork, which is probably the first to second best masterwork option to grind for for any fusion rifle. However, it's been tested by many people in the community 
that using this masterwork will reduce your initial impact, which depending on your weapon can turn them from a 4 bolt to a 5 bolt kill, plus higher. So please look into which weapon has it and whether it's worth grinding out for it or not. Next, the barrels. For the barrels, we have 6 to choose from, but instead of me going through every last one of them and say the pros and cons to them, I'll just give you the info you need. Like I mentioned earlier, we need even more range or stability depending on what your version you have. Out of the 6, small bore is the best option to go with for its balanced stats in both stability and range, with both having 7 plus compared to the others. It's not giving an impressive plus 10 or 15 that we would like to have, but it offers us the most balanced stats out of the 6 and has no downside to it, which is also a big plus for us. We do also have Corkscrew Rifling, which offers us a plus 5 in range, stability and handling, all which benefits the weapon, but I feel like it's slow stat points to invest in. 4 bore is another option that offers plus 15 in range, but knocks our stability down to minus 10, and handling to minus 5 as well, which is the polar opposite of Corkscrew. Hammer Forge Rifling offers us plus 10 in range, while Polygonal Rifling offers us plus 10 in stability. Both of us say are great perks to have with, with generally no downsides in them. Perk Column 2. Now within this column here, we have another 6 batch to choose from, but it's pretty obvious as to what role to go with. The top ones to aim for are Accelerate Coils offers us faster charge time by adding plus 10 to the charge time and minus 10 on impact. I don't really need to go in detail for this as everyone in the mothers know what this perk does, and is one of the major perks to have for any fusion rifle you have because of how useful its stat is, and the benefit it offers. But please remember, like I mentioned before, about the impact and how the impact can affect a fusion rifle in terms of increasing the chances of killing someone. Next we have Particle Repeater, which offers us a plus 10 stability and benefits fusion rifles with low stability, which I would say is the most aggressive frame fusions in game. Then we have Projecting Fuse, which offers us a plus 10 in range and Light Particle Repeater benefits fusion rifles with low range but average to good stability. Out of 3, Accelerate Coil is your best choice to go with as no matter what fusion you use, faster charge time is the way to go in Crucible. The other two are also really good to go with if you don't get Accelerate Coils as it improves on the weapon's pros even more. The other battery types I have left out didn't feel that they fit well with the weapon in its current state, as we need to focus on fixing the underlying issues with the weapons first. Perks such as Liquid Coil does have its benefits with fusions that are either a rapid fire frame for a boost in impact or adaptive frames, but are useless on high impact frames since they already have a high amount of impact. The other last battery types only focus on increasing magazine size, which is useless. Perk column 3, in this column here we have quite a varied amount of perks to pick from that can benefit many fusion rifles. Now we have tap the trigger, which offers us a brief increase in stability and accuracy on the initial trigger pull, and is quite a well sought after perk for any fusion rifle because of the benefit it offers. As you will be pre-charging a lot, this perk will always activate before the moment of you firing it. So the benefit of this perk is that 99.9% .9 of the times, your accuracy and stability will always be increased. No cooldowns, which means you can increase your kill count a lot more, but just having this perk available is always a plus. Under pressure, a viable perk to have for generally any weapon. It can be extremely useful in our case with centering and tightening our bolt spread when fired. Also, as the weapon starts out with 2 rounds in Crucible, you'll be activating this perk a lot, so it's just like Tap the Trigger, where both perks will always be active for you. Threat Detector, a situational perk to use depending on the fusion rifle type being used, it offers the benefit of increased reload, stability and handling for the weapon when enemies are in close proximity to you. Now, this perk is a 50-50 depending on your fusion being used, as fast firing to average fusion rifles, they will benefit the most. Their freeze charge up won't put you out on a major disadvantage against multiple foes. However, during this on a high impact fusion, this can also benefit it, but its pre charge up compared to the rest really hurts it. And for a weapon, for an impact that is that high, but reload speed is that low and charge time is that ridiculously high, I don't feel like Threat Detector would work for the high impact frames. Anyways, in short, Good for fast firing to average fusion rifles, while bad for our high impact fusion rifles. Quick draw, what is more to say? 
Great parts for any weapon and can allow you to change the tide of fight if you need be. Snapshot sights are another great part to have for any weapon, although for fusion it benefits those with low charge up times and can make any weapon act as a, as a mini shotgun when paired with the right perks. I've left out Feeding Frenzy as, although good, I only see this perk work in wonders if your weapon has really low reload speed, and I'm talking below 30. Although our weapon has 33 reload speed, I don't find it gimping me in fights, as I always reload out of sight and in safe cover. Perk column 4. And now the final slot. The one that should finalise the core weapon and perks so you could freely utilise the whole weapon and make it finally the weapon of mass destruction that you've always sought after. We have Demolitionist, which can benefit the user by giving them a small percentage of grenade energy upon kills. Although there are way better perks that benefit a fusion rifle compared to this, if you get one with some good charge time reduction and stability plus range increase, then it's quite worth keeping. For a weapon though, it's best if you focus on reducing its charge time or increasing its stability and range, as that's the major killer for the weapon. Rangefinder. No matter what weapon you roll with, Rainfinder will always be a top perk to pick for fusions as it extends the fusion rifle's bolt projectiles to allow you to one hit KO enemies at much further distance than normal. Now just a heads up though, if you want to be mapping people like you see with most Arianta users, make sure your stability is at a sufficient level to tighten up your bolts and increase one hit potential. Ideally between 40 to 60 is a good range to work towards. Backup plan. What is there to explain? It had to charge up time upon switching to it and can make weapons like the area or something out of nightmares against other users who know how to fully utilize it. If you hit this perk for this weapon, then you've hit the jackpot, my friends. Kill Clip is another nice perk to have as it increases the TDK for most weapons. For a fusion though, it won't be needed as there's already a high impact based fusion and it will consistently enough one shot players in the crucible. So this added perk won't benefit us anything at all. Plus the perk has a short duration after reload, so the moment you get it, you need to use it straight away. With a charge time of 740, unfortunately this weapon can't make it work in its own favour, unless you decide to use it in PvE. Swashbuckler, a perk similar to Rampage where getting kills increase your damage. But once again, damage increase is not of our concern, as the weapon already has a high enough impact for consistent one shot kills. But if you get one, I do recommend you hold on to it, as it can make the weapon even more deadlier than normal. Moving target, this perk here for a fusion is good if the charge rate of a weapon was a tad better. The perk offers us increased movement speed and target acquisition, which is great for weapons like SMGs, ARs, shotguns, sidearms, generally anything. Basically any weapon that focuses on moving around a lot. For our fusion choice, it's best if you stay away from it as the weapon's charge time is a thing that puts you at a major disadvantage. And even though it increases movement speed and aim sifts, which can help you with landing shots, you have to remember fusion bolts spread on movement, which for some fusion isn't that bad, but for others it can be very distasteful. Now conclusion. So now that we've gone through all the perks with their pros and cons for the weapon, we have to look at what perks is best to run with overall and ultimately create a god roll that you should be hunting for, for well generally for pvp. So here's what I've chose, mass work, stability plus 10 or range plus 10, barrels, small bore, hammer towards rifling or polygonal rifling, column 2, accelerated coils, projecting fuse or particle repeater, column 3, tap the trigger or under pressure, column 4, backup plan or range finder. The perks I have chosen focus on the three main areas that all fusion rifles need focusing on to make them more deadlier. Although our Epicurean has good stats for its impact, range and stability, it falls flat on the reload, handling and charge time. Now like I previously mentioned, its reload and handling aren't that much of an issue to deal with as we won't be confronting players up close, but rather at a 5 plus meters range. So we'll be safe to fire and reload the weapon of our choice behind cover behind our teammates, generally as long as we're not up front in CTC range or shotgun range, we should be completely fine. Now this leaves you room to either increase your weapons range outside of this area or increase the stability to tighten his bolts. The main thing you should really focus on is reducing his charge time as much as you can, although 
inconsistent at times, this weapon can be lethal with mopping up players who challenge you in most 1v1 fights. But with his charge time being this high, you won't always get the chance to outdo fast firing weapons or even have the chance to compete against the Ariental Fusion Rifle. If you can get a role that focuses on stability increase and reduced charge time, then you would truly have a god role epic hero in your hand, but if not, then all the other recommendation perks are just as fine to work with as well. So that comes to the end of the weapon review video for just a low meta weapon and god roll episode. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the content then do leave a like, a sub and also do press the little bell button just like that to stay always updated to when I upload. I would appreciate a lot if you do. But like always, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.